So people aren't exactly in love with Washington or Congress these days, and part of that's simply because we're digging out of a recession and the mood of the country is grim. But there's a lot more to it than that. Let's dig deeper now with Bill Maher, host of Real Time, the HBO special. Bill Maher, but I'm not wrong. We spoke earlier tonight. Senator Bai, he says things are so polarized that, that Congress isn't working and the people's business isn't getting done. Do you, do, you, do you buy his reason for leaving? He wasn't working. He's the problem with Congress. How so? That made me laugh. Well, because he's not a centrist. People, you, you guys in the media have to stop calling people like that a centrist. He's a corporatist, okay? And that's the main problem with Congress. You know, his wife is on the board of WellPoint, one of the big health insurance companies. So you don't buy his... So I'm not surprised that he was against the public option. So when he says Congress isn't working, that's why Congress isn't working, because he's the guy on the Democratic side who always sides with the Republicans to stop all legislation. That's why the Senate is where legislation goes to die. So, bye bye Do you think things are too polarized? They're not polarized enough. We don't have a progressive party in this country. This is the problem, is that you have corporatist Democrats like Evan Bayh, who act just like the people on the other side of the aisle. Do you think he'll become a lobbyist? He won't be really changing jobs, just offices. <laughs> uh, what, what is Barack Obama doing wrong? I mean, you were a big supporter of his. Sure. And I you know, still have the situation in perspective. <laughs> you know, it would be a lot worse, uh, I think, if the election had gone the other way. Um, you compared him to Lindsay Lohan. <laughs> I can't remember why, but you are well, correct. I think, the line, I think the line was, and I, I'm going to get it wrong, so I, I hesitate to say it, but something was like, yeah. we, we read a lot about them both, but uh, we're still wondering what they're actually doing. Yes, you're young and skinny and in a hurry, but what are you going to do? Um, we're both getting the line wrong, but I know what you mean, yes. <laughs> do you believe what he says? I mean, he says a lot. Do you... Yes, if only he knew someone in a position of power, because he's got a great <laughs> list of things he wants to accomplish. He, he doesn't but, you know, know he, he, now he just thinks that this, he still is, he makes the mistake that every Democrat makes. He's really, you know, I, I think he's going to have a learning curve, as all presidents do, but he sure didn't have a great freshman year. And he makes that mistake of alienating his base, not playing to the base, trying to get the other people. So he's quick, too quick to compromise. You're right. He did, you're right. He's trying to solve this with a kiss. It's not going to happen that way. Obama was talking the other day about, well, uh, you know, I, I, I'd rather be a, a one-term president who got things done than a, than a lame two-term. Well, then get something done. You can only talk about being this bold one-term president if you're being bold. He's not being bold. You say, though, there, that there's, there's not enough partisanship, but you have the Tea Party movement, which you've been very critical of. You, they are certainly partisan. Uh, well, they're great for comedy. They're a joke to me because they're supposedly harking back to the days of the founding fathers and what this country was about. That's not what they're about. They basically side with the Republicans. Who's more corporatist than the Republicans? They're against corporate power, but but they're they're on the side of people. Like they say, they say they're not about parties, that they're about people, that they're about... Uh, they, they, focus they, they elected Scott Brown. Wasn't that the first scalp they got, Ted Kennedy? They got his seat, they put Scott Brown in there. Scott Brown signs, uh, when he signs an autograph, he puts on it 41, because he's the 41st senator. In other words, he can block all legislation. So he's going to stop health care reform. And he's going to stop cap and trade and all these things that would actually help people, these, the populist causes. But that's supposedly a virtue, that he's 41 and he's going to stop that. Who do you blame for, the, for, for what's happened to health care reform? Well, I, I mean, I blame a lot of people. Uh, I mean, certainly the people who are in the pockets of the insurance industries and the drug companies and all the corporate powers that have blocked this and have, don't want this to go through because the main problem with health care is insurance companies, this giant cash-sucking middleman that we don't need in the middle of it. But, of course, I also blame the Democrats for not being able to sell this. There's an awful lot of good things in this Senate bill that's already been passed, covers 30 million more people. Um, Medicare, solved until 2026. Uh, you know, you can't throw somebody off because pre-existing conditions. You know, it's not that there's not stuff to sell, it's just that the, the Democrats can't sell it. They're terrible salesmen and they back off of everything. All you have to do is scream a little and they give up on it. Uh, Bill Maher, thanks. Thank you, Anderson, pleasure.